So there's a bunch of good stories in one Russian creepypasta archive. Based on tales told by Anon's grandpa, who worked as a police investigator in Soviet Union and 90s Russia. Those stories are basically posts made by the Anon on one of the Russian image boards many years ago. To my knowledge, there is no English translation of these stories, even though they are pretty good, and they are all based on actual police cases Anon's grandfather worked on. Since I speak Russian, would some Anons here like me to translate them? I am asking because there's a shitload of text, and I wouldn't want to do all this work if no one here is interested in this stuff. These days, I don't even know what X is about anymore. So gentlemen, I've managed to find a cable for my cheap photo camera, and that means that this is time for some exciting tales. As I already said, my late grandpa served in Militsiva. Translator note, Militsiva is the name for police forces in Soviet Union and many Warsaw Pact countries. In the Soviet Union and till the very end of the 90s, to be more precise, he was an inspector in the Sol Militsiva station in a small town near Moscow. He was a very tight-lipped, solemn man, but when you asked him about his work, he usually became more talkative. In my opinion, work was the only thing he loved in his life. So when I was younger, I was interested in paranormal stuff even back then. I spent a lot of evenings in his kitchen, inquiring about the most interesting cases of his career. After my grandfather died, I found a thick notebook that he apparently used as a diary of sorts that he'd keep in his personal cabinet. In that diary, there was a collection of the most, let's say, curious cases. I've managed to get this diary from my grandma a few times, and reading it, I was always thinking about my grandpa as some mathematician. No literature style, no personal opinions, only confirmed cold facts, such as place where corpse was found, a criminologist evaluation, suspects, and stuff like that. A few theories and a couple of notes. I think he kept working on these cases in his free time, trying to solve these riddles. Most of his notes correlated with stories he told me when I was a child. But there were also a few that I never heard about. In case you suddenly enjoy some of these stories, I might even pay a visit to my grandma and ask her to let me flip through a few pages of that diary, read up on some cases I'm not familiar with, and make a few photos of the former scenes of crimes. Later, we can even try to guess what happened there. As I have said, I wanted to write some sort of book about those cases, so I will provide you with some photos that I already got with some additional notes. But don't expect all my photos to be exact crime scenes, for obvious reasons. In some cases, I was too chicken to enter particular houses because neighborhoods here, as a town in general, are all full of certain criminal elements and if you enter some shitty hostel full of ex-cons and drug addicts, you might simply never leave it. And some places got intercoms these days. I will also add that there will be no Popo Bawas. Translator note, Popo Bawa is an evil spirit from Zanzibar. That is also a bit of a meme on Russian X because the name sounds funny in Russian. Something like Ass Joker. No colorful descriptions of monsters and stuff like that. Many cases have serious mystical undertones, but with some imagination, you probably can explain it within a framework of habitual phenomena. But I can promise you a bit of noir dismemberment and romantic of piss-stained staircases in apartment complexes. Oh yes, I would also ask you not to get all booty blasted about quality of my photos. I'm no photographer, and instead of a proper camera, I got this digital piece of shit. Well, let's start. First case. First case I want to tell you about happened in 93, and it is particularly interesting because no one managed to explain what happened there. I will add a few photos to this post. First has an apartment complex where it happened. Second, an exact place where the body was found. Second stairwell between the third and fourth floors, if you absolutely must know. So around 10 o'clock in the evening, an investigatory operative group in this small town, it consisted of regular random cops, but usually had an investigator. Translator note, Soviet slash Russian analog of Detective Frank, and an expert criminologist, was called in on report about discovery of a corpse. And this is what they saw on the staircase, a human body leaking a shitload of blood, 
head separated from torso and lying not far away. Lacerations as if someone chewed him. According to my grandpa, his clothes that consisted of training pants, sweater, and slippers, torn in a dozen of places. Also, some smaller injuries on his naked skin. It was instantly obvious that this corpse was fresh, which was confirmed by a criminologist on the scene. Rigor mortis hasn't set in, which indicated less than two hours passed since the moment of his death. This was confirmed later during the interrogation of victim's inconsolable widow, who lived on the fourth floor and whose door was like three meters from the body. By the way, she was the one who actually found and reported the corpse. The widow was clearly an alcoholic and already had time to get wasted, but nonetheless, she did provide some information. Her husband left the flat around 9.30 in the evening to take out some garbage. When 15 minutes passed, she started to worry that he decided to stop and chat with his drinking buddies who usually sat near the entrance of the apartment complex, drinking. Windows of their flat provided no overview of the yard outside, if I recall correctly. So she decided to go downstairs herself to look for him. But the moment she left the flat, she saw a disfigured body of her husband in a pool of blood. She failed to provide any more details during the later questionings. Now for the interesting part. Interrogations of the inhabitants of that complex provided literally no additional information. Not a single one of them heard any ruckus, screams, or sounds of fighting. Nothing. And that is considering the shitty non-soundproof doors people had back then. There was also indeed a bunch of drunkards sitting at the porch downstairs. According to them, they were hanging out there since around 8 in the evening. And in all that time, only some old lady who lived on the first floor and a single mother who lived on the second entered the complex. Both of them also heard and saw nothing. During that time, not a single person left the complex. By the by, my grandfather almost instantly suspected some sort of large dog. What else could dismember a person in such manner in the middle of civilization? Later investigation revealed that there were two dog owners in that complex, but their dogs were not nearly big enough to inflict such wounds, which was also later confirmed by the coroner. The head was indeed separated from the body, as if with the teeth of a large animal. His spine was literally grinded in places. Also, one of his legs had very clear markings of jaws. According to the coroner, it looked very deliberate, as if left there intentionally. Every single tooth of both lower and upper jaw left a clean mark, which almost never happens in normal coroner's practice. That one sure never seen such a thing. Jaws indeed were similar to a dog's, but a really big one. And there were 48 of those teeth marks there, while normal dogs only have 42. Sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less, but rarely, and not by much. Now, a couple of my own comments. Large dogs are indeed capable to separate grown man's head from his body in 15 to 20 minutes. I can confirm this as an owner of a large dog. No, my dog didn't kill anyone, but can chew through a large bone in around 10 minutes. But there would be a fuckload of noise and shouts. Okay, if dog somehow managed to rip that guy's vocal cords in the first bite, there wouldn't be any more shouts, which I guess is possible considering the size of those jaws. But how can no one notice a huge ownerless dog entering slash exiting the apartment complex? Such animals tend to be remembered. Another strange thing is that the blood was only found near the body. There was no blood on the stairs themselves, neither above nor below. As if he was first put on the floor, then got his head calmly chewed off in silence. My dog attacked a homeless dog once. There was a lot of blood. It was fucking dripping from its jaws and chest all the way home. And let me remind you that humans have much more blood than a dog. Nothing like that here. Everything is crispy clean. So we have something big that appeared on the staircase between the floors. The house had no garbage chute. If you would like to entertain such a wild theory of its method of movement. Silently chewed grown man's head off. Left a dozen of injuries on his body without any signs of resistance. And then disappeared. So it goes officially. The case was explained by a wild dog attack and closed the fuck down, not before informing all the local dog catchers that they should do their work better in the future.